Yep, another super test tank. The Object 265T. And as you have seen in the title or in a thumbnail, this thing is already on Leicester as a tier 8 vehicle. In the, in the test server at least, but it's coming. The thing is, this allows us to have a look at its preliminary damage model or armor model. It is not as accurate as the one we are going to get, and frankly, thanks to GG is a gods, and it's so much better than a website, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But it also means that the armor values will not be as accurate as you might think. In short, the 265 is a reverse auto-loaded 390 alpha gun with a rear-mounted turret and a heavy tank. And now you might already hear 390 alpha. Hmm. That could be like the Object 752. And very well, you, my dear viewer, you are very, very quick at learning. So that is why we are going to compare it to the 752. Point is, I do not like the 752. Its gun is, to say the least, not good and not player friendly. I didn't like playing it. I just am not a big fan of guns which are poo poo doo doo accurate. So what does the 265 do different? Again, it has the same free shot auto loader as the 752. It's just an auto reloader, meaning its first round takes 11 seconds to reload, the second 14 and the third 17. So if we add that up 11 plus 14 plus 17, we get 42 seconds of total reload time, which is obviously quite a lot longer than what we have on this tank right here, it's, which is 34 seconds. However, and here comes the big point. Min with a out reverse out reloader, you don't really want to load the tank fully. You just want to constantly shoot, because this is where your gimmick is. You drive into a position, shoot your three rounds or two rounds that you have loaded, and then you start pumping that BPM. And the 265T is exactly that. It has a 2.5 seconds interclip, meaning it doesn't need 6.4 seconds to do 1170 damage. It needs 5 seconds, which is quite a bit faster. And after that, you have a DPM of 2127 base. A whopping 5... Did I say it correctly? No, 400 more than the 752. That is already quite a big difference. Adding to that, we also have an aim time which is 0.7 seconds faster. That is big. That is genuinely big. We obviously don't know if the 265T has better or worse gun handling because the 752 on the move's gun handling is, ah, oh, it hurts my brain. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's, it's frustrating, you know? It's, it's just like, ugh, why do I play this? The pen on both tanks is bad. 242 versus 240 and 300 millimeters versus 310 millimeters. Both of those tanks kind of suck when it comes to penetrating, which is a little bit annoying. But still, both of those tanks are also 8 degrees of gun depression. So there is no real downside of the 265's gun, if you have to be honest. Because let's be fair and square. Currently, Playing the 752 is not that easy because most maps don't really allow you to show yourself for a long period of time. The only real maps where it kind of works would be, for example, Westfield. But then you have to overpeak so much that you get completely slammed by TDs on the heavy flank because you only have 8 degrees of gun depression, which the 2652T has as well. Mobility wise, top speed, dead even. Reverse speed, Two points to the 265. Power to weight ratio, two points or two HP per ton ratio to the 265. So it is faster overall, which is neat. We take it. That's fine. 1800 hit points is pretty stout and it's even 50 more than what the Object 752 has to offer. Now we have to do a little bit of a detour to have a look at the armor model. The thing is, again, as mentioned previously, Leicester already has the tank. Here it's a tier 8 vehicle. Just so you know, on this paper stat right here, it says that the 265T has 130mm of whole armor and 300mm of turret armor. Keep in mind, those paper stats usually are more or less a little bit wonky. I can show you why. If you go into tanks.gg, all tanks, and check out the CS63, one of the more capable tier 10 tanks at the moment. You can see 
right down here, it has 260mm of turret armor. Does it have 260mm of turret armor? Yes, but it's here. The rest is 75 or 65, so it's just this tiny thing. The thing is though, it still allows us to roughly estimate what this tank's armor will be, because when we now look here, it says 150 and 250. When we now go into the um, damage model, you can see 150, 250. So, if we now deduce, because we are smart people, we can say that this will most likely not be 150, but 130 millimeters. Which is obviously not as good as the 150, because look at this. It has 360 millimeters of effective armor. Jesus. But it will have around maybe... 300 millimeters of effective armor. The main issue will be, you can see it from the placement, this right here. Those little wedges. These are going to be your downfall when you try to side scrape with the 265T. So keep that in mind. When they're only 130 millimeters thick, it's not gonna be bueno. Adding to that, we are now losing 15 millimeters of side armor. The good thing is, you can see the 265T has angled sides down low, meaning that especially when you're shooting from a top, you're most likely going to bounce that off because of her her funny Russian uh, boat-like structures, you know, which is, I don't know, kind of odd, but hey, it works out for them. The thing is though, the difference between 50 millimeters of side armor is pretty actually massive because even though you don't have a lot of side armor in many cases, it helps you especially against people which are shooting heat. And on tier 9, there are quite a lot more, which I have to point out in this direction, quite a lot more heat slingers than you have on tier 8. Also, the turret has, in the U version, 300mm, meaning that we're most likely going to see this to be 300mm and not like here 250 which is going to be pretty decent, I would say. It will allow this tank to bounce a decent chunk, but it will have its issues against some more stronger vehicles. We can also see that while it looks here like the cupola is very massive, it is still fairly well hidden, and this protrusion over here is not that big of a deal. So it, this could be a pretty, pretty decent tank. And this is why I would like to also wrap it up like that. Just on paper, this thing looks strong. It looks not OP, but it looks strong. Yes, the penetration sucks and the gun handling will most likely be annoying, but the fact that it's an auto reloader just basically confirms to me that this is most likely going to be a better 752. Maybe this is going to be a premium tank for the loot boxes like the Tiger Mouse was. It looks very, very, very reminiscent of a loot box tank, in my honest opinion, because it tries to be something unique again. It's, it tries to sell a unique mechanic with the auto-reloader on tier 9. It feels, at least on the paper, to be a decent tank, but obviously, characteristics are not final, subject to change, plus we don't know what the accuracy on the move is, because this could make or break the tank. This might change a tank of being able to run Okay, no, actually, the good thing is it can run the stabilizer all the time because it doesn't need a rammer. But then again, you might also want to run something differently too, additional to the vertical stabilizer because the gun has so horrendous accuracies on the move and tour traverse. We don't know yet. Main point is this tank will most likely be part of the loot boxes with the contradictions, which I think in the previous video I said it wrong, and the coost, which is again at your 8. TD and should most likely be a tier 9 or tier 10 TD. But that's it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the 265T. My name is Raging Raptor, and I see you around.